Hey, I am John Barker, and welcome to another episode of Here to Record Show and Tell. Today we're going to take a look at the Blackmagic Design Video Assist. This is the uh, five inch model. I have the box right here, but I'll just put that aside and show you the actual uh, Video Assist itself. Let's just take a little tour around the device then. You have the, uh, the screen here on the front. At the top and the bottom are pretty similar. You have the standard tripod mounts. You've got three there, and flipping around to the bottom, you've got three more down here. You also have the USB port for updating the firmware. And then um, on, the, on the back, you have two plates for, uh, for batteries. That's the Canon uh, LPE6 batteries that you can put on there, or you can, uh, you can also put on the other batteries too if you want. And a little fan just sits right in here just to uh, cool the unit down. Looking on this side, we have the ins and outs. We have uh, SDI coming in via DIN connectors or DIN connectors. And then you have HDMI in and out as well over here. And finally on this side, we have a few things. We have the power button over here. We have a headphone uh, jack right here. Have the place for the SD cards and also where you plug in your 12 volt power right there. So why don't we uh, turn it on and see what it can do. So I have the power cable right here and um, I'll just plug that in and we can switch it on and see how it works. Just press the button and just wait for a few seconds. And there you go, you can see that it's powered on. And you can just about hear the fan, um, the fan spins up when you turn it on just to make sure it's cool. I haven't found that this fan comes on very often. Whenever you change from ProRes to DNX HD, the fan comes on for a second or two, but it's never really got to the point where it stayed on for very long for me. Um, you can just about hear it spinning, but it's, it's very, very quiet. Um, so looking at the interface, uh, along the top you have sort of the, the uh, input settings and the uh, recording settings, time code and a few other things. And then the bottom um, you have the, you know, the main controls where you press play to playback or record or you also have an audio meter over here. So I'll just plug in this, uh, this camera source and we can have a look at how it all works together. So automatically you'll see up at the top corner what the um, resolution and frame rate of your source is. So in this case, I am coming in 1080p 50 and that will just automatically adjust to whatever you plug in. So if you plug in 1080i 50 or 1080p 60, it'll just adjust and it'll say that up there. Um, next, you can jump into the settings. Um, if you just click or just press, sorry, right here on the, the top corner, you can see a few settings like uh, Zebra, Focus Assist, you can put on some guides, um, put on a, a grid or some false color. I'll just play with that a little bit so you can just see what it does. Uh, and Zebra, for example, you can see, just about see there, if my finger doesn't get in the way, uh, you can see the Zebra's coming up. Uh, focus Assist, you can see that happening too. Medium high, hopefully my face is in focus. I think it is, good. Uh, some guides, 4.3, 2.39.1. So that just gives you a general idea of what you can do and so on, you've got some grids, I'll just keep all that stuff off, and false color, if you want to get really funky with it. Um, that's fine, let's get out of there. Best thing to do to get out of a menu, I think is just tap outside of the menu. Uh, looking next, you can't really do anything here, because like I said, it automatically sets what the resolution of frame rate is. But if we go into, um, press on the, uh, on the codec, you can make a few changes here. So. This is where you set what you want to record as. I'm doing this upside down, so sorry if I'm not pressing the button properly. But here I can do, uh, yeah, I can do ProRes, uh, Proxy, LT, ProRes, HQ, and then I can change the DNX HD models. Um, I have done some testing with uh, approximate times of, um, of record times, and you can see that graph on the screen now, where, uh, depending on what codec you choose. Um, I've given you a rough estimation of what time you can expect to record for. Just keep in mind, this is a 1080p 50 signal and obviously things might vary for you. And it's also a 128 gig card. Um, but I think it's just a, a good way to see a rough example of what you might get from, uh, from this recorder. Something I find really useful to see is how much I can roughly get based on what SD card I put in it. Trigger recording, um, you can set that over SDI or HDMI, and also you can do it from time code, but I just keep that off. And also you can set the source. I only have a HDMI plugged in right now, so HDMI is my only option, but also you can have SDI plugged in at the same time, and then flick between them there. Uh, you can also get to those settings over here as well. If you just click or just press over there, you can see that's the same settings. 
Um, and finally, or not finally, but here's the indication of batteries. I don't really use batteries for this. I, I like to keep it plugged in all the time, so it, it never dies for me, but that's useful for you if you want to do that. So you can see what level the, the power is for each of your batteries um, that are attached to the back. And then I can just click on um, this little card ready uh, part right here. And I can see a few more settings for the uh, video assist. Up here is the name given to it. I've just left it as, um, oh, sorry, the card name. Yeah, so that's the, the uh, SD card that's plugged in, what it's actually called. You can see the capacity, the format, and you can format the card from in here. Uh, you can also change a few settings within the, the monitor settings here. So this is where you turn on your, uh, your LUTs, your 3D LUTs, if you have any. And um, it has a nice little feature where you can rotate the screen automatically. I think you can probably just see it if I leave this menu. Uh, as I turn the screen back and forth, it automatically knows what direction it's, uh, which way it's up. So it will change that, or you can turn that off if you want, if you want to put it in a, in a funny location. Next up, display. You can change the brightness and the contrast. I'll just keep that in around there for now. Um, and saturation as well. And lastly in here is the setup. So this is the actual device name, um, today's date and time and then what software you're running and also the language you're running on. Um, there's a little back arrow just right at the bottom corner just to get out of this menu uh, because it's a sort of full screen menu. So that's a look at the menus of the device. Let's take a look at the bottom and uh, you can see how to control it and things like that. So at the bottom we have this little histogram and then beside that we have the uh, standard controls. You have uh, play to play back anything that you've recorded or record obviously to record. Um, let's just hit record for a minute and we'll just let that run for, uh, for a few seconds. You can see really the only option now is to stop the recording. Um, just to show you what happens whenever you wanna get rid of these menus, you just swipe down and they'll go away. And you can see right here in the middle, just about to see that recording is indicated by that little, uh, that little red line. So I'll just bring back the menus again and I can see the audio meter as well over here on the side. Um, I find that really useful for, for monitoring audio at a conference and stuff. I put my headphones in the side and it works really well. Um, so I'll just hit stop on that. So now let's just take a look in the play mode and see how that looks. So if I press play, um, it'll automatically start playing that clip that I just recorded, uh, whatever the cl last clip was. It gives me uh, some details up here, the clip name and the duration. I have a little uh, timeline here I can scrub through and I can go back to the start, just pause it, skip, I can skip through a few clips that I was recording earlier just to do some tests. Um, and then I can press stop and that takes me back out to the recording mode. Um, it's pretty pretty good. I can use this one little last uh, option here which is a little plus and that means I can zoom in. Now, the one thing is you can't actually move around on the screen. All you can do is zoom in to the, the point in the center of the screen. It's good for focus but obviously if something is off uh, the side of the screen then it's not really that useful. You need to re, uh, remove your cam or move your camera. So I'll just head back out again, pressing that little button. And that's pretty much it. You swipe up and down to get rid of the, the menus and to bring them back on again. Um, you can see the headset level if you click on the uh, audio meters. That's where you can set that. And that's all the settings of the video assist. So in terms of what I really like about this device, I really like the good quality screen on there. Um, I find it very useful for, uh, for finding focus points and um, using it as my reference monitor whenever I'm at a conference. Um, I like that it records to SD card as well, so I can record a backup of whatever I'm filming on the day. I tend to record in uh, proxy mode so I can take the most out of the, uh, of the SD cards. It's kind of a final backup for me, so hopefully I'll never have to use it, but it's really nice to have it. Um, and I also like how responsive the touchscreen actually is. Quite often you can find with these touchscreens, um, they, they don't quite work that well. You have to tap quite a few times to, um, to make them work. But I find this one works really well. Any mistakes you see in, uh, in the touchscreen today, it was probably because I was using upside down rather than the touchscreen not being responsive enough. So I will say that while I tend to like normal good old buttons, the touchscreen works very well on this. So I, I definitely trust it. I would say in terms of the cons, it's a shame that you have to use an extra, an extra connector to get your SDI in and get these little, uh, these little DIN connectors instead. Here's the example cables where you get uh, DIN on these smaller ends here and then SDI male or SDI female on the other end. Um, 
Uh, I can understand why, of course, it's a small, small device. I can see why you would need to use these small little connectors rather than full-size uh, BNC connectors. But it's just another cable that you have to bring with you to make sure this device works. So that's definitely an up, uh, or sorry, a, a downside of, of the whole thing. Um, you can obviously pick up several of these and use them for other devices too, like the uh, shuttle and stuff like that. So you might need these for other things as well. But if it's the only thing that you need uh, DIN connectors for, it's just another cable to bring along and uh, another thing to remember to pack or forget to pack, whatever the case may be. And the other thing um, about it is the knowing when it's recording. So when I press that record button and it's uh, recording the footage, sometimes it's a little hard to tell, and I have seen this, this uh, comment online as well, that it's a little hard to tell when it's definitely recording at a glance. Yes, I can see the time code running. Um, this button kind of looks the same as it did before, the square to the circle, there's not a huge difference. Whenever you uh, hide the menu, that little record icon is nice to see down at the bottom. But um, I feel like at a glance, it's not quite as easy to tell that it's recording um, than, it, than it should be. So that's something that could be fixed um, pretty easily. I'm not sure what the solution is, but something that just tells you you're definitely recording um, because at a glance, it is uh, not uh, really easy to tell that you're recording. So in terms of the pricing for this, I'm just going to check my notes. I pay for the about 350 pounds, which is about 400 euros, 425 dollars, and then for the little DIN uh, SDI pack, um, for that I paid around 45 pounds, which is 50 euros, 55 dollars. So all in, it's pretty um, inexpensive. I also picked this up on a Black Friday or Cyber Monday deal, and it was around half off. So it was a really good deal. So in that, in that sense, for me, this was definitely worth every penny. Um, but I think at full price, it's definitely worth it for that good quality screen, that recording to SD card, and uh, recording in ProRes or DNX HD for your editing uh, to be pretty streamlined. So I would say it's definitely worth it. I would recommend this device most definitely. Um, if you're gonna use it for DSLR uh, as a external monitor or actually to record, uh, your your footage out of your Canon DSLR or whatever it may be, I would definitely recommend it for that. It's a it's a really light, really mountable uh, option, um, and it works really well. So I would say, if it's something that you're looking for, small monitor that also records, then this is the one. Uh, this is the one I'd recommend. And don't forget, if this is not quite for you, there is also a, a seven inch 4K monitor that will do a load more uh, nice things, and it's uh, around double the price. So if this is a little small for your needs or you're looking to do something in 4K, then I would definitely recommend checking out the uh, VideoSys 4K as well. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you want to watch more videos, we've got a bunch more show and tell episodes and other, uh, other sorts of walkthroughs and how-tos. And don't forget to subscribe. We make a new video almost every week. And um, hopefully we'll see you next time. So thanks for watching.